you might find art that I, woman leader with almost 30 years of experience and always working for Swiss company, which is supporting, supporting women, and I'm still talking about women empowerment. But it is critical that we continue to talk about the women empowerment. So, I am the oldest daughter and I was born to farm family with three younger brothers. And I quickly realized that women empowerment is not just about roles we have, about education we have, but it, it is fundamentally about how we perceive ourselves and how our society and how our professional community is seeing us. That's what is fundamental. And you can see also that I'm a proud mother of two adult daughters. And there is one mantra I am repeating to them since very early stage. Be brave and do things and fail. Fail again and again. But do not do nothing and regret it afterwards. And that's also something I would recommend to myself, younger Irma advice would be, be brave, step out of your comfort zone, and the magic will happen. So that's belief we still need to keep in our mind, even in 2024. So the question is, why do we still need to talk about women empowerment in the 21st century? Let me share a few facts with you. Okay. Can someone help me to moving? Okay. So here are a few facts. 39% of women have low self-esteem, lack of self-confidence, and that's the main obstacle for the professional growth. On top of it, 65% of women still believe that the gender is important for next professional step. And majority of you, your mothers, and throughout the maternity leaves, usually we are able to observe a huge decline in the professional career steps. Only one out of five women don't feel that. That's one, these are just few facts. Okay, it seems I have a problem today. Okay, so let's go now to what's going on with the managerial positions. In European Union, 34% of women are leaders. The good news is that in Poland, 44% of women are on the managerial position. But when we go to the C-level positions, situation also in Poland is different, only 15%. What else we can say? So despite we have a decade old rule, equal work, equal pay, we are still discussing a huge, huge wage gap difference. Almost 13% for all women in Europe. The situation with managers' position is even worse. 23% difference. It's huge. It's huge and it's not acceptable. So probably the question you, we have now, how long it will take to bridge the gap and have the same wage? So here I want to have a bit of your reaction. So how many of you believe it will take us 50 years 
Please raise your hands. Okay. How many of you think it will take more than 130 years to close the gap? Yeah. It seems that the awareness in this room is correct. It's sad, but unfortunately, that's our future if we don't do better. These are the latest data from 2022. 132 years with the speed we have. And this is an urgent call that we do things differently, that we don't just talk, but we act and do. So I would like to share now a few examples we are doing in my own company, Roche Poland. The one project we are really proud of, okay, I'm gonna skip this one, is our IT. We are a company with 1,200 employees. Out of that, 550 people are working in our research and development Roche Informatics. And out of them, 38% are women. And we are very proud because that's much, much higher than it is in Poland, where you can see in the IT sector, 15.5% only. So that's one thing we are really proud of. The second thing I'm particularly proud of that in our Roche Pharma Management Board, nine members and six of them are women. So I hope that with these two examples, I show you that in Roche, we don't just talk, but we act and we have results. What else we have? I'm not sure you have heard about the destination IT. That's the project we are running together with Mamu Pratsui. The first one started in 2022 with 100 applic uh, applications. So 100 young women, young mothers wanted to join the IT sector, but they didn't have the background about that. So we are taking care and uh, developing them with the right things they need to join the IT. After 100 applicants, we choose 15, and out of 15, three are our employees. The year later was even better, 200 applications, 24 selected, and five of them are our employees. These are things how we are helping young women to find their next career step. So in conclusion, the journey toward closing the wage gap requires more than just small steps. The incremental changes we are doing, they are not good enough. It will take us 132 years to close the gap. And that's something we cannot accept. That's something we cannot accept because for me, I will use the very strong word, it's criminal. It's criminal that our daughters, our granddaughters don't have equal rights than our men colleagues. And I hope that majority in this room is still women, but I hope that the, our women allies are supporting this. And one thing at the end to emphasize, Coming back to the roots, to the roots, to believing in ourselves, we need to start with young people. That's why we are supporting very much organizations which are building on the young people awareness. And one of them is Girls Future Ready. In the panel, you will be able to listen to Olivia and what she will be able to bring. And, yes, we will change only something if we will start with ourselves. Believing in ourselves, believing in our capabilities, we will be able to change ourselves and also the wage gap at the end. And we can start 
here today. And I believe we can do it, I can do it. Dziękuję bardzo. Wow.